Hey guys, Mr. Relatable here. I just wanted to do a quick showcase and tutorial video showing off how to make a combination lock in Fortnite Creative. Now for this example, I'm going to be using three inputs. What this combination lock allows you to do is have an infinite number of inputs, as well as make it so players have to hit them in the correct order to unlock a door. So for this example, I'm going to be using the code 213. If I hit the code 213, a door will unlock. Now this is really key for adventure maps and puzzle maps if you want to have a combination lock. So let's get right into the tutorial. First thing you're going to need to do is just build up a couple blocks in case you ever want to go down for any reason. And after you have these couple blocks, place a shape that looks something like this and just delete that. So you should have an L shaped. Put a ramp at the tip of the L and now go to devices and grab 15 music sequencers, 5 shopping carts, and one trigger. We're going to place the shopping cart facing this direction so it will roll down the ramp like so. Place a music sequencer directly next to it and here's the first of many settings that we're going to modify. Tempo slash BPM is going to go up to 180. If you guys didn't know and you're on PC, if you click on the number you can actually use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the number up really quickly. Very very helpful if you're trying to get high numbers like so. Length we're going to put to normal. Width is going to be half, and height is normal. Damage, we're going to put on very low. Should have something that looks like this. Next thing you're going to want to do is put a music sequencer at the tip of the L. And put the tempo BPM to 180. Length is normal. Height and width are both half. As well as we're going to put a wall, like so. Now here's what we have to start. This is the core for our entire mechanic. And you're going to be needing to use this kind of L-shaped for everything. Next thing you're going to want to do is build out two blocks like so. Build a block above that one that we just placed. And place three more. So we have our L-shape right here as well as our extra block. Grab a music sequencer and place it like so. Tempo BPM up to 180 yet again. Before I forget, you're going to need to put looping on infinite on this one. Infinite is very important. If you don't put it on, it won't function properly. Length, put to normal. Width is half. Height is half. As well as trigger type, put that on an on off switch. Damage is going to be elimination. Activate on game phase, game start. So now we used to, you should have something like this when you activate it. Put a ramp right behind it. Shopping cart on the side, yet again, and put another music sequencer right on the side of it. Music sequencer is going to be a direct copy of what we did for the first one. So 180, length is going to be normal, width is going to be half, height is normal, damage very low. Now this is pretty much all that you need to do for a combination lock. You're just going to want to keep expanding this outwards, and I will be doing that one more time because we have three inputs. The shopping carts count each for one input. One shopping cart is one input. So we have two inputs currently. I'm going to be putting a third one for three. Put a music sequencer at the end of the L, similar to what we did over here, as well as putting a wall on the back side of it. Tempo BPM is up to 180 yet again. Length is going to be normal with height both on half. We're going to take what we did here and put it over here yet again. So build out two from this music sequencer and draw your L shape. I'm going to move that out. After you draw your L shape, put a music sequencer and then copy the exact settings that we had for the damage music sequencer. So looping infinite, tempo BPM up to 180, length is normal, width, height, both on half. Damage is going to be elimination. Trigger type, on off switch, start sequence, nope, actually activate on game phase, game start. Once again, after you hit it, you should have a barrier that keeps kind of bouncing like so. Turn it off though. Put a ramp with a shopping cart on it. Music sequencer next to the ramp. Tempo BPM on the music sequencer up to 180. Length is normal, width is half, height is normal, damage is very low. And that's all we need to do for our combination lock. We should have something that kind of looks like this. As I said, each shopping cart is an input. 
So if you were to do input number, or if you were to do five inputs, for example, you would just take what we've made and kind of expand that. So you would put another music sequencer, put two blocks, make our L shape again, put another damage music sequencer, ramp, music sequencer, and then kind of keep expanding it like so. However, as I said, we're just going to be doing three. So we're going to delete this and go on with the tutorial. At the end of this music sequencer, or at the end of this combination lock, excuse me, this shopping cart, so number three, is going to be our final input. So this music sequencer is going to face outwards. This is going to be our output music sequencer. This doesn't really have to be changed. What all I'm going to do is put a little piano tile at the end so we know if we get it correct. So that is the core of it. Next thing you're going to want to do is actually hook up the buttons to this. So as I said in the very beginning of the video, we're going to be using code 213. The so shopping cart number one needs to be two as it's the first number in the sequence. If our code is 213, two is the first number in the sequence. So we'll go down all the way to the bottom and put start sequence when receiving from channel two. One is the second code in our input. So shopping cart number two will be channel one. So two, one, and now three over here. So that's pretty much it. Now we gotta go down to our triggers itself and go down and modify each of them. So the first one, triggered by damage on. One triggered transmit on channel one, as it's the first button on the wall. Triggered by damage on. One transmitted or one triggered trans two. Second button in the wall. Triggered by damage on. Channel three. So now we just have one, two, three. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna be doing kind of a walkthrough of what's actually going on here. If you guys actually want to know the hardcore mechanics of what's going on. If you don't though, I'm gonna have a little timestamp in the bottom left corner of the screen that you can just follow. And that'll just take you to when we are actually practicing and stuff like that. But for now, I'm just gonna be going through how to actually do this, or what it actually does, excuse me. So what's going on here is both of these damage music sequencers are on game start, which means at the start of the game, they're gonna be looking like that. That's what's gonna go on at the very start of the game. Now, what would happen if you hit the number one before hitting the number two? The code is 213, yet again. So what if we hit one first? Well, one is attached to this shopping cart. The shopping cart in the middle, that's what one is assigned to. Well, if you hit one first, the shopping cart will be damaged and roll down the hill and hit this barrier. This barrier will instantly kill it, thus resetting it back up to the top. Now, what if we hit two first? Well, two will roll down this ramp and hit this button right here, thus opening the barrier, allowing one to roll on down. Same thing that happens over here. If you hit three first, the shopping cart will just hit the barrier. So you have to hit two, which then unlocks one, which then would unlock three. Now three can roll on through and activate our little piano. But that's the basics of the mechanics of what's going on here. And I'm just gonna be showing you guys what it looks like in action now. Here's what we got going on here. So if we hit one and three, you can see nothing happened. One rolls down the ramp and hits the barrier and instantly dies and goes back up to the top. Now what if we hit two? Well, two rolls down and unlocks the barrier for one. Now if we hit one, one rolls down, locks a barrier for three. Three. Goes on through. Two, one, three. So we're going to be adding a little bit more to this now, as it's not completely perfect. The reason why this is not perfect, and the reason why I wanted to show this off first, is so you know what not to do. What's not perfect here is that there's no reset mechanic, which means that you can hit two, and then three, and then one, and what that actually does is it still opens up the channels for two and one, meaning 
All you have to do then is just hit three because three is open. Now, how do we fix this? It's actually really, really simple. We're gonna wanna grab some triggers, a music sequencer set, and then go to the galleries actually and grab the cube gallery. We'll just plop this down right quick. We're not gonna mess with that just yet. We're gonna wanna take our sequencer and throw it in this location. This is between the two music sequencers right here. Throw down your trigger. And we're just gonna pick that up like so. What we're gonna modify on this is the delay, which is pretty much saying, how long do you want before this mechanic gets reset? For us, five seconds is plenty because people will be able to hit three buttons within five seconds pretty easily. You do, however, have more. Let's say you have seven buttons. Well, you might want to modify this to maybe 10 seconds as people can't hit seven buttons within 10 seconds. Put this on to five seconds for now. And we're also going to modify the reset delay. Put that on two seconds. Now down here, when trans or when triggered transmit on, put that to four. The reason we're doing four is because channel one, two, and three are all occupied currently. But we need a channel that's open. Four is open, so we can put it on channel four. Next thing you're gonna want to do is just come over to here, like so, and place a music sequencer like that. This is gonna be on 180 yet again. Length is going to be normal. Actually, length is going to be half, excuse me. Width is also going to be normal. And height is going to be half. I believe that's correct. Yes. Okay. You should have a kind of a bar that looks like that. You're also going to want to make sure that the damage is on elimination. And then start sequence when receiving from channel 4. Same channel that we used for this. You can use any channel realistically. However, I'm just using 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to be doing 5 over there. Just for simplicity purposes, you could use 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It doesn't really matter. But, like I said, we're just going to be using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Throw down another one over here. Do the exact same thing. Delay. 5 seconds. Reset delay. 2. One triggered. Transmit on channel 5. Put our music sequencer over here. Tempo BPM up to 180. Put the length to half. Width is normal. Height is half. Damage, elimination, and start sequence when receiving from channel 5. The reason we're using 5 is because we used 4 over here, so we need another open channel. And that is pretty much it. Now, the reason we threw down this cube gallery is because we're just going to grab a cube. And we need to place it something like that. We're going to be placing it like that. So it's kind of halfway between the blocks. Do that over here too. Place it like that. So it's halfway between the blocks. Now this is kind of a weird thing to be putting here. The reason we need this is because sometimes the shopping cart will the hitbox will go through the wall. So this will actually not hit the shopping cart. Now, why does it actually need to hit the shopping cart? You might ask. A little complex. So once again, I'm just going to leave a annotation to kind of skip over this. But what's happening here is that the shopping cart's rolling down. And let's say that this, this barrier is on by default. Both barriers are on by default. The shopping cart rolls down. hits the barrier. That turns that off. Okay. Now, after five seconds which is what the delay that we put on this. After five seconds, this will be activated. So if we just count one, two, three, four, five, this will activate. And now the barrier is back on, as well as because this is a damage um, sequencer, it'll actually destroy the shopping cart that has hit this little button. So that shopping cart will also go back up to the top. So that resets the shopping cart back up to the top, as well as resets the barrier to the on position. Same thing happens over here. It turns off the barrier. One, two, three, four, five. The barrier turns back on. Shopping cart gets destroyed. Goes back up to the top. So we're just going to start the game now. Show you guys what it actually looks like in action now that it is 
100% fully complete. So if I hit two, then one, we will look up. Three is open, but we've waited too long. So the shopping cart gets destroyed and then resets back up to the top. And bam, our system is fully back to what it was to start. We hit three, one. Yet again, nothing happens. Shopping cards get reset back up because the damage is still there. We hit two, one, three. Music plays. So that is everything that you need to know about this sequence. Everything here is completely finished and done. And what you can actually do just to add a little bit of spice to it is add a little note when you get the combination wrong. How do you do this? It's actually really simple. You're gonna wanna grab, we're just gonna grab this piano note because I don't wanna grab another one and just put it so it gets activated by this. So we're just gonna put it like that. I'm actually gonna move it over just a little bit so the shopping cart might not hit by it. And that's all you have to do if you want a incorrect noise. As well, a little modification. Add a, another trigger at the very end over here where it plays the tone. We're gonna just move this tone all the way down here for now. Put the when triggered transmit on. We're gonna do channel six as we need an open channel. Grab an explosive device. Place it right inside the sequencer, like so. Modify the settings so it's going to be player damage, zero. Structure damage, 500. Damage indestructible buildings, yes. Blast radius is one. And let's see what else. Show VX, show, or play audio slash VFX off, as well as explode when receiving from channel six. You're gonna to wanna to do that on both. However, you can just come over, copy it, and paste it. So that's pretty much as advanced as this thing can get. You can modify it slightly more. However, this is pretty much all you're gonna need. What this does now is if we type in the wrong combination or we are too slow, so I type in two, one, you will see this note will get played, meaning we got it wrong. We get two, one again. I'll just show you guys yet again. The note will be played, everything will get reset. Kind of saying, you got it wrong, everything's reset. We hit two, one, three. Everything gets destroyed, and then this one gets played. So that's pretty much it. This is everything that you needed to know about combination locks. I'm sorry if the video was long and I was a little long-winded and all that. But I wanted to be very, very thorough with you guys so you understand what's going on here, as well as so you guys can follow this step by step and kind of do it on your own. If you do have any more questions still, feel free to leave them below and I will respond. However, like I said, this should be it for now. So yeah, if you guys do still have more questions, leave them below. But that is going to be it from me, guys. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.